So my the job I've had for the last three years was working in an escape room, which I know you don't know anything about. I know fuck all about this. Please educate me. Uh, okay, so sidebar. An escape room is essentially um, you come with a group of friends, like between two to seven of you normally, um, and you get put in a room, which uh, and in the very kind of early days, the door would be locked and you had to solve the puzzles around the room to try and get out. Right. So basically you'd be looking for stuff or there'd be things on the wall or things hidden around and you'd find keys or solve puzzles and get codes to open boxes to find further things. And it's just, it's a really good fun experience um, to do with your mates, which genuinely you get to see the absolute worst of humanity <laughs> kind of, um, especially wait, wait, when wait, you're, wait, wait. is this like, it's really fun for you and your mates because you see the worst of humanity or it's not fun for them, but it's fun for you because you get to see the worst of them. I mean, it's a bit of both. I, I play a lot of escape rooms and it's great after you, it's a big, big adrenaline rush because you've got only got 60 minutes to do everything. Yeah. Um, and so when there's a time pressure on you doing something like that, suddenly um, your, your girlfriend who you love in the world, you'll be going, just pick up the fucking key. And like, <laughs> it just comes out of you yeah. um it's, it's horrible that's like I, i'm but at hosting um like generally the one that i worked at we try and make it a very immersive experience so um like the whole kind of feet they're all different themes and this ours was like science so i would meet them as a mad scientist um and uh like give them a briefing in character and it was great because it was like a bit of comedy because i they would talk to me and it was a conversation and i just ripped the shit out of them yeah. or make jokes about them was, if they were stag dudes and hen dudes which you, you get quite a lot of like you go oh i'm gonna go to town on, on the, these boys they they, yeah. they ask for it uh, and so that you get that fix of of comedy from, from doing that but sitting back and watching people do it you just see you, you get to know what hu humankind is like and i'll be honest 80 percent of the time just absolute despair at how we've got this far as humans yeah like the stupid things people try and get do they're just like why it makes no sense what you're saying and doing yeah uh, does it kind of is it like people get angrier than you would necessarily you would you would ordinarily think they do or they they're it's, impatient it's that, yeah but a bit, bit, definitely a bit of that more than that it's them going maybe we'll try this even though this makes absolutely no sense at all yeah i thought i found something long and thin so maybe i should just put it in this hole i can see yeah. and you're like that's it's 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 just a it's just a screw it's just a screw <laughs> hole that you just you just put it in like what yeah like and people just doing bizarre things going well uh i'm going to invent a new code now which like, like this has got four letters in the word uh and or well over there it, there's a a number four with a yellow background and bananas are yellow so maybe this is a number four <laughs> yeah. you're like wow you really i mean it's not that complicated like what you really are you allowed to be are you allowed to be cunty to them like if they're obviously being stupid can you be, i don't like, know if you're allowed and... to be but i i am <laughs> I, I was just i was such a dick <laughs> and it's the it, I just I love it. You have to turn it down with the kids in there, but even then, yeah. If you do something stupid, I'm going to tell you you're doing something stupid. Yeah, uh, but then if it's like stag stag groups, and they do something oh. stupid and they're a bit pissed, and then you roast them for it, do you get like have you pissed anyone off? Have they punched you? <laughs> no, because I I, I, think, I mean I think it's the the comedian instinct um, that we have. I, I know what the line is. More importantly than that. I know that when you have a stag do, you pick on, I don't want to say pick on the weakest member, but pick on the, the loudest dickhead there. As long as everyone else in the group is pissing themselves laughing, yeah, they can't get angry at you because then they look like a knobhead. Yeah. Um, and and so I was very good at picking my jokes and picking my battles. And then everyone else going, ah, yeah, you are. You are a fucking idiot. <laughs> um, and then I look like a legend for, for, for calling them out on it. Yeah. Well, it sounds like that. That sounds like a pretty good job to fall into. In wait, was this at the beginning of the pandemic, or was this before the pandemic? It was before, way before the pandemic, um, and they were of really course, good. The pandemic, I'm guessing they wouldn't be in an enclosed space, <laughs> right? Uh, but they were really good at like furloughing us th throughout it, which was which was really good. We didn't have to do. Yeah. Um, but I, I was lucky to work for a really good company called. If you're in Brighton, Bewilderbox. Uh, they were fantastic escape rooms and just fantastic people. 
Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's really good fun. Maybe you should go try it. Go try do one sometime. Yeah, I might do. I don't know. Maybe I'll if I get married. If I if I ever get round to proposing, then I'll uh, I'll put it on my list of stuff to do for my stag weekend. Oh wow! Oh, oh my lord! Where did there that you come go. from? There's the beers coming out. Like, we yeah. sometimes get couples coming in to it, and like Valentine's Day, we had a load of couples coming in. My God, they were just the thick. They were so thick. Like I was like, is this what you have in common? That like you you're, you're both so stupid, and and you you bond over that. Is that is that what's happening? <laughs> Yeah, but or, or do you think it's like one of them is stupid and the other one is just like kind of being nice and romantic? Like I can't lambast her for being a fucking idiot. I'll it's tell you fantastic. what did happen once. Um, I, I witnessed a breakup in the escape room. Really? Once. It was the best thing. It was just like, because I'm just watching through CCTV and I can talk to them yeah. like, over a microphone as if I'm like some artificial intelligence. And so it's just like watching Love Island where you can talk to the contestants. But it was this very, very young couple. They were like 19, I think. And it was her birthday. Oh, fuck. And in, from the very beginning, she was very argumentative. She I, I, like she didn't want to be there. I found out it was because when she was walking up the stairs, she broke a nail. Oh, right. And so she wanted to take out her upset on the world. Yeah. Unfortunately, when you're locked in a room with just your boyfriend, there's only one person you can take that out on. Yeah. And it's him. Um, and so... <laughs> She was just like st- trying to start a fight with him. She was like, I'm not bothered with these puzzles. And she kept, she was like, you're not explaining the puzzles to me. God, what's wrong with you? And he was just ignored her and just got on with it. And that annoyed her even more and even more. Eventually, she just went, you know what? Fuck you. I'm just going to go and get a beer. Enjoy your little escape room. And then she just stormed out of the room. Wow. Like, um, and he was just left standing in the room. And it, he just went, James, um, can I just finish by myself? And I was like, I think you better get used to that, my friend. <laughs> Did him? Yeah, it was great. God, uh, how was fucking awkward! That, that, that the one line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how fucking like? I mean, I don't think I've ever seen anyone publicly break up like that outside of like my hometown back in the day. This is not really a work thing. It's like you know, every everyone's hometown. When you drive through the town centre at like eleven o'clock at night. Or eleven thirty, and they like it's pub kicking out time. I used to see couples then like arguing and breaking up, like drunk dudes on their knees, their girlfriend in tears, and like something's happened in the pub. Like you know, maybe she she caught him like looking at her friend, or but they're a bit pissed. Everyone's had a few beers, and so it ends up in this fucking like I don't know seventeenth century painting scene like where he's like on his knees out out the front of the bell in maidenhead his girlfriend's there like crying like mascara and he's there just going like i love you louise (laughs) and she's not even looking at him she's just like no like looking the other way and uh it's my favorite thing to watch man yeah i just i love it i should have parked up and just sat there with a you know bag of popcorn or something but um yeah but yeah, so I've seen stuff like that, but I've never seen like at work. I don't think anyone break. Actually, oh fuck, I've just remembered something. I used to work at in a bowling alley, and uh, and there was a girl there who like every fuck. God, this is going to sound so mean spirited and cunty. Go on. Shall I say it? Fuck it. Yeah, let's just commit to it now. All right, I'm never going to see her again. So fuck it. Uh, so there was a girl that I worked with in the sales office who would not shut the fuck up about her boyfriend, right? And this kind of... I know this sounds really cunty, James, but there is a kind of person who only ever talks about their partner, whether it's their girlfriend or their boyfriend, and every single fucking sentence or story or paragraph is peppered with their fucking partner's name and what their partner would say or think about it. And it's really fucking tedious. Because if you're on the end of it, it's like, no, I'm talking to you, James. I don't... Like, why are you why are you bringing whoever into it? Like, let's have a conversation with yeah. just you and me. But this would go it's, on it's, it's, for like I mean, months. It's, it's either because you are like you have no other personality. You, you found someone and they now your personality. Precisely. Or it's because you're just so dull. You have nothing else in your life. You, and you every other waking moment, you're not at work. You're with this person. Yeah. I think it's like a, a symptom of immense insecurity, which, again, like I feel shitty now sort of bringing it up or like, saying what i'm about to say please do though i'm really yeah. i'm really i'm still it. gonna say it yeah i don't feel that yeah. bad um <laughs> but, but 
but it, it's it comes from insecurity i think it's like these people need to know that i have a boyfriend these people need to know that i'm in a relationship that i'm worthy of love uh i think that's where it comes from but yes yeah yeah but yeah so if every fucking thing that she said or answered to or you know fucking conversations with customers on the phone she's just like okay oh, yeah, no, i'll have to tell my boyfriend about this later. and i'm just like every time she said it me and this other guy who worked in there would just go like you know pinch your nose to like relieve the stress because you just fucking hate it so much and uh and then one day about six or seven months into this uh we both me and this mate of mine come into the sales office and she's just she's just sat there in floods of tears devastated and me and this I, like i looked over him i was just like fuck like what's what's what is wrong with her he <laughs> did the cheshire cat grin the shit-eating grin on his face was just like he's sat back in his office chair just like so happy and i said is everything all right and she's like like me and this gentleman's name she's like oh, me and he like we, we we broke up and i i was like oh okay all right like just go and get yourself a coffee and then i looked over at this mate of mine and he just like, as soon as she left the sales office door it was like an explosion a fucking firework display of laughter i was like <laughs> there's i mean there's very few moments in professional life particularly in a bowling alley sales office that can elicit that much joy <laughs> like, I, I i imagine so <laughs>